It was a very special, a very moving night for me because it was the exactly one year to the day when I lost my husband, Ezra Ratlin, and it would have been all too easy to stay at home and weep and think about the sadness of his death and the run-up to it and the hospital and the intensive care. And that was something I just didn't want to do. And I decided I, would, I wanted to make that day something much more special. So I decided to organize a concert in his memory to celebrate his life because I felt his whole life had been a very exciting one. He was a magnificent musician and a wonderful human being. And I felt that by celebrating his life, it would help me come to terms with that very sad anniversary. So the concert was arranged. It was in aid of the Beethoven Fund for Deaf Children, to which I dedicated a large part of my life. And uh, wonderful artists were on stage at the Savoy Theatre. And I was intent on, on making it a very special night for the audience to remember. But what I didn't know was that behind my back, uh, it, there were people planning a very big surprise for me, which was to make the light even more of a wonderful memory for me. So when that moment came at the end of the show, when I was taking my bow, I heard this gasp from the audience and I could see cameras coming towards me. And then I saw Michael Asper with the big red book. And I thought, good heavens, who can it be for? Edward Fox was on the stage with me and Evelyn Glennie. I knew it couldn't be her because I'd been involved with her This Is Your Life program. So I knew it wasn't her. And I thought, Joanna David, could it be her? And, and then, of course, by this time, he was heading towards me. And then I thought, I'm supposed to be in charge of this concert. How, how come I don't know what's going on? And then came that magical moment when, when Michael said, this is your life. It's something I'll never forget because it turned a sad date into a joyous evening and gave me wonderful, happy memories that have really enriched my life. We left the stage because Michael had invited the audience to stay and told them that the bar would remain open and that they were the guests. And, but there was a, a big reception taking place to, uh, we had the Her Majesty Queen Anne Marie of Greece as our guest of honor, and lots of wonderfully important people from the world of the deaf as part from the theatrical world. And we had a big reception and I was hosting it. So I had to continue, I, I, I had no choice. So the, the, we went ahead with the reception and everybody was saying, did you know, did you know? And I said, no, I had no idea. And I had no idea what was going to happen. And I also didn't know that there were a lot of people that had been flown in from all over the world that were being kept hidden. I think they were in some luxury because the Savoy Hotel was nearby. So I don't think they were suffering any. But uh, as far as I was concerned, I knew nothing about that. And so I had to get on with my job, which was to have host a wonderful reception. And then they came for me. And I remember getting taken to a dressing room and having my hair retitivated. And then all of a sudden, I was on. <laughs> well, Evelyn Glennie, I have to say, because um, Ezra and I had played a considerable part in her career. Um, I think Joanna David and seeing Amelia Fox for the first time since she'd been my pupil was very lovely. But probably um, the arrival of Joy Chance, of course, when she came in and we met on the, on the show for the first time, I had no idea what she looked like. We hadn't exchanged photographs, but we somehow knew each other very well. And it was a really magical moment. She was one of the highlights. The other one was the boy that had inspired me to start the Beethoven Fund. And when I was first teaching, there was a deaf boy in my class. He was the only one who could answer the questions, but not about the music. And I'd felt it was such a tragedy that he, music was not in a, a part of his life. And it was because of him that I started the Beethoven Fund for Deaf Children. And, and they found this boy and he came on. It was just a wonderful moment to meet him since he was a tiny little boy. It was really magical. Rabbi Hugo Grin was a mentor. He was 
very, very special to me. There is no other person like Hugo Grin. He's totally irreplaceable. Archbishop Runcie, dear Robert, became a very close friend. Over the years, we, we were very good friends. And we went out for dinner many times, and he... He was very special. He was also very supportive to me when Ezra died. It was a, a unique sort of special friendship. And, of course, the two great musicians who were on who were on the show, um, um, Lord Menuhin and Sir George Shalty, also played a big part on that show. It was, I was tremendously honoured by what they said to me at that, on that special night. It was total magic. I spent many hours on a mobile phone in a wardrobe trying to conceal the history of the secret that was being prepared. <laughs> There's lots of fun, I can tell you. From it that. was terribly difficult because we'd shared so much. We discussed so much with the fun with music activities that we were doing together with, with young children. And this very important part was just bursting to come out and tell her, but of course I couldn't. I was sworn to secrecy, and of course it was, wasn't easy. Anne had gone out to the hairdresser and the res research lady was round the corner in her car and she came in to have a look at some photographs. And uh, I got a mobile call from Anne saying that the she had to come, she couldn't wait any longer at the hairdresser, was on her way back. And of course we had to close the meeting very quickly and shuffle people out the back door while Anne was coming through the front door. Oh, it was hair raising. I think it covered so many aspects of my life. Even my my songwriting came into it. It was, it was very very colourful. A lot of people told me they found it very moving. Uh, I think it it encompassed a great many of the of the various aspects of my life, children and music, but also of course the Beethoven Fund for Deaf Children, which was, again, children and music, but in a different way, teaching children how to communicate through music, children who couldn't hear and couldn't speak pr prior to the musical speech therapy that we used to sponsor in schools for the deaf. It did give a, quite a good, uh, a good uh, picture of that side of my life, and I think it also showed a bit of the fun uh, that we'd, I mean, life has been fun, still is, and um, it's colourful and exciting. And now, age 78, I find it just as thrilling and just as exciting. And new doors are always opening, and you, you just have to grab the handle and walk through and make things happen. <laughs>